Hi guys, let's talk about that cargo ship accident that knocked down the bridge in Baltimore. There have been a lot of theories since then and I want to look deeper into every or the ones that are the most spread because some call some stuff conspiracy theories, some are make total sense about what really happened, but also the consequences of that accident that means for the whole US need to be discussed guys and of course you know we will look into everything some say the captain of that boat has been Ukrainian so is this something that is a payback for Nord Stream and stuff like this we will look into this I'm not going to laugh about it you know we take everything serious and discuss it and then we decide does it make sense or does it not make sense one thing is for sure right now the good thing is they were able the vessel was able to give a mayday call and on inform the authorities that there were problems so the authorities were able to block the traffic on the bridge and that's why there haven't been more fatalities there were seven workers on the bridge they found two of the workers in the cold water the water is very very cold one worker was in very critical condition so he couldn't even be interviewed the other worker seems to be fine refused treatment but there is no trace of the other five and you know assuming the time that has passed since then and the temperature of the water there's not much hope and they have basically stopped the search and now you know time will tell if they can recover them or not um here is the latest the weather is so bad it's pouring pouring buckets again so when i'm done with my chores i'll go inside and we talk about this hi guys here we are again rudy and i and rudy's leaving right away he was like, nah, nothing for me. No, there was another reason. And I'll show you at the end of the video what was the reason why Rudy left. But um, now let's, let's get to a really serious topic. And that is the accident that happened. And that ended with a bridge collapsing. And we've seen the live webcams from the city of Baltimore where you see the cargo ship approaching and then a lot of people thought the lights would go out the moment it hit the bridge pillar but actually if you look more closely the lights go out before that and then they go back on and then they go out once it hits the bridge pillar and you see black smoke coming so what is a short summary of what we know so far there were seven about seven people probably on the bridge so the bodies of two of the construction workers who died after that 984 feet long cargo ship hit that pillar of the baltimore's francis scott key bridge so that is a very very long cargo ship this is nothing small and you have to imagine if that ship is in motion a ship like this can't stop easily or within a short period of time. This is way worse than a, a running train or something because the, the sheer weight of that thing is pushing forward. And even if you put the engines in backward motos, it will still push forward for a while. Any further search efforts have been paused and uh, the, the remaining workers are presumed dead because the water is so cold they couldn't find them. So the investigation into that collision, and you have to listen to this, guys, could take up to two years. That is crazy. But that has been a statement of the National Transportation Safety Board Chair Jennifer Homendy. So two years, wow. I mean, we know if you're following my channel, I'm reporting about the Titan submersible accident quite a lot. So that's almost a year ago and we still have no um, answers from any investigation. So that is still ongoing. So um, 
what happened before the collision. So the crew first signaled trouble with the vessel when a pilot radioed for help from tugboats at about 1.26 a.m. Eastern time on Tuesday. So just about three minutes before the ship hit the column of the bridge. So this is data that they're getting from the voyage recorder of the vessel. So the collapse has indefinitely halted the flow of ships in and out of Baltimore. And Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said rebuilding the bridge won't be quick or easy. Today, the governor of Maryland, Wes Moore, has called this bridge collapse a global crisis. So this might give you a, a feeling of how significant this event is. This is just not, well, bridge collapse, let's rebuild. This has repercussions and big ones. So the national economy and the world's economy depends on the port of Baltimore. This is a major port for the U.S. and for trade. So the port handles more cars and more farm equipment, for example, than any other port in the country. What do we know about the seven people or six people? Some reports say six, some say seven. The workers on the bridge that are presumed deceased, um, they were from Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. And that's uh, according to the superintendent of Maryland State Police. So the two men that have been recovered, the two bodies, um, have been identified as Alejandro Hernandez Fuentes from Mexico and Dorian Ronial Castillo Cabrera from Guatemala. So the two workers were filling potholes on the bridge and then they were later found trapped in a red pickup truck in about 20 feet deep water. The FBI is handling right now notifying the victims' families. So what were or are the recovery efforts for the remaining workers? The authorities are pausing these efforts for the other workers because additional vehicles are encased in concrete and other debris, making it very, very unsafe for divers to go down there because they could get stuck and then have problems themselves. Their lives could be in danger. So they're saying that once salvage operations will clear up that debris, that the divers will search for more remains. And guys, since we're in the middle of the video, if you could take a few seconds and give this video a like, that would help my channel a lot. And of course, please continue to watch this video till the end. Thanks so much for that, guys. And if you're new, subscribe. I'd love to hear on my channel. Have, I would love to have you here on my channel. On the Pulse with Silky. Back to the video, guys. And what about the investigation? What do we know so far? So the National Transportation Safety Board is leading the investigation into this incident, according to their chair, Jennifer Homendy. So during a Wednesday news conference, Homendy said that there were 21 crew members and two pilots on board the Dali cargo ship when it crashed into the bridge. So it was two pilots, they're responsible for maneuvering these ships through the port and out to open water. So they are the experts and not the captains are doing this. This is out of safety and precaution and these are regulations. So. Of course, many people wonder what has happened. So we'll get to that later because there's some other shocking news about that case. 
Another problem is, uh, she also said that a senior NTSB hazmat investigator has identified 56 containers of hazardous material on the vessel and some of those containers are in the water and that is not good. So the agency received six hours of voyage data from the ship and the investigation could take 12 to 24 months to complete. Why? I don't know, guys. Um, hopefully, we will hear more why it will take so long because they have this recorder, they still have the vessel, and uh, basically, it should not be too hard to identify what has happened or what's the other problem. And that's why I think there are so many other theories out there about what might have really happened. So, she said she emphasized that NTSB will not analyze information collected or provide conclusions while on the scene of the collapse. So the Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said rebuilding the bridge will not be quick or easy, but they will get it done. He said there are four main focus points ahead. First, of course, reopening the port and dealing with supply chain issues until it's reopening, then rebuilding the bridge and dealing with traffic issues until that bridge is rebuilt. So Biden pledged the full support of the federal government in the response and recovery efforts. Um, his administration has already conveyed a sense of urgency to open up federal funding to remove debris and ultimately rebuild the bridge. So we hope that this will really happen, but I guess it will, it is an important bridge. Um, the state of Maryland has submitted a request to the Biden administration for emergency relief funds to assist in their work moving forward. The fire chief of Baltimore has said it is difficult or near impossible and very, very dangerous to place people on the bow of the vessel right now because it seems to be very, very unstable there. And he says that naturally we're still very cognizant of the fact that there are hazardous materials on board the vessel itself. That's why the fire chief said that his team is relying heavily on aerial pictures, including drone videos. So he says that's the only way they're able to see what's going on on that ship. And he added that the aerial surveillance has been able to really assure them right now that they have no chemical reactions on board because that if there is a chemical reaction that can cause even more problems and hurt people big time. The NTSB chief has said about the site of the collision that it's just utter devastation. She said, quote, it's pretty devastating, certainly, seeing not just what's going on with the cargo containers, but just looking at what was a bridge span. Three bridge spans that is pretty much gone. It's just utter devastation. So, and she also added that she's thinking of the families who lost loved ones and those who are waiting to reunite with their loved ones. What about the crew of that vessel? The NTSB has interviewed the captain of the Dali and other crew members today. So that was the captain, his mate, the chief engineer and one other engineer. The two pilots that were on board of the Dali at the time of the collision, they will be interviewed tomorrow. Maybe the reason why they need more time is we always have flight recorders in mind because we know if there is a plane crash, a, a bigger plane crash or something mysterious happened, that's always the first thing, where's the black box? The problem is, a cargo vessel's black box or voyage recorder is quite basic if you compare it to an airplane's recorder. So you can't get that much information out of it. The good thing is that the voyage data recorder of the DALI was a newer model, but still it is considered basic compared to an airplane. And that's what the National Transportation Safety Board is stating.
because usually if it's a, a, a flight black box, you have like a thousand parameters. And it's this recorder, it's not a ship-wide system recorder. So most of the sensors are being recorded are from the bridge of the boat. Does that make sense? Hmm. Now we know maybe not, and maybe they have to change this. So things like GPS, the audio, the rudder feedback, the rudder commands are recorded on there, but not engineering or the temperature of each cylinder or power distribution sensors. And I think after this accident, I think this seriously needs to be changed because that is the most important data that gives you information about what might have happened about with engines, engineering sort of thing, right? Maybe you noticed that at the time of collision, there were no tugboats with the Dali. And of course, people were wondering, well, why not? They could have maybe pulled the ship around or prevented something, but the NTSB chief said, this is normal that there were no tugboats. Because they say the tugs help the vessel leave the dock, leave the port and get into the main shipping channel and then they leave. So once a vessel is on its way, it's a straight shot through the channel. So there are no tugs with the vessel at the time. So that's why when they um, released an emergency call, they were calling for tugs. And that was at 1.26 and 39 seconds on Tuesday, the Dali's pilot made a general very high frequency radio call for tugs in the vicinity of the vessel to assist. So, but that was too late because shortly after they already crashed into the bridge and knocked the bridge down. The bridge is very old. It has been built in 1977. And that's why the safety precautions for this bridge differ from newer bridges. So the bridge did not have any redundancy, unlike, you know, the preferred method for building bridges today. The NTSB says the bridge is a fracture critical. What that means is if a member fails, that would likely cause a portion of it or the entire bridge to collapse. There is no redundancy and that's what happened. That's what we've seen in that webcam live feed. The preferred method for building bridges today is that there is a redundancy built in. So whether that's transmitting loads to another member or some sort of structural redundancy, this bridge did not have redundancy. And you know, you're wondering that a country like the United States has a bridge that is so critical because the bridge itself and the traffic that goes over the bridge, like over 31,000 cars and trucks per day, but only also what's going underneath that bridge. This so important international port and hub that's going there where the vessels are going in and out and that there's no upgrade to that infrastructure, that is mind blowing. And I have to say one thing, you know, I, I really love the United States and I've lived there for a while and it's my heart is really, really there. But if you drive through some areas um, and see how people live, in these areas. It, it it looks like a third world country where a hurricane or a tornado has just blown through. And this is not isolated in just one spot. It's spread all over the country. And it's, yeah, it's mind blowing. And you wonder why is there no help? Why is that not being restored? The infrastructure, the roads, I mean, the, the cracks, the potholes, when you drive there, it's sometimes mind blowing. And it happens to me that so many times, I'm like, sometimes I stop over and I wonder is my car still okay? And that's on major highways. And you know, money should be spent there before money maybe is spent somewhere else in the world. This is absolutely, absolutely crazy in my opinion. And this is something you not only see in the US, um, it's even the case um, 
in Germany, where I'm from originally, um, where retired Germans have to collect bottles and go to the food bank, um, although they have worked all their lives and paid into the system and then other people come in and they just get a free check. So is that fair? I have to say that I'm not, I don't want to get political. I'm just observing things and uh, yeah, it's shocking to me and that bridge that should have been upgraded like a long time ago in my opinion guys let me know what do you think let me know in the comments do you observe stuff like this in your own country let me know let's start a civilized discussion and uh, i would love that but let's further look into this incident and, and here's the problem in the United States, there are 17,468 bridges like this, fracture critical bridges out of 615,000 bridges in total. So probably, hopefully not, but they're probably not far away from another incident. These bridges need to be upgraded ASAP. But what really happened on that ship? Some say engine failure, some say electricity failure, some say the captain, he's from Ukraine, this was planned. You know, there's, there's theories. So approximately at 12.39 a.m. Eastern time, the ship has departed from Seagirt Marine Terminal. By 1.07 p.m., the ship had entered the Fort Mac Henry Channel. And at 1.24.59, numerous audible alarms were recorded on the ship's bridge audio. About the same time, the VDR sensor data ceased recording. So the VDR audio continued to record using the redundant power source. So was there no power? At 1.26.02, the VDR resumed recording sensor data, and during this time, steering commands and rudder orders were recorded on the audio. So did they try to steer away from their collision course? At 1.26.39, the ship's pilot made a general very high frequency radio call for tugboats in the vicinity to come quickly and assist the vessel. So about this time, the Pilot Association dispatcher phoned the Maryland Transportation Authority duty officer regarding the blackout. So they said they had a blacked out, blackout. That was 126.39. Then around 127.04, the pilot ordered the vessel to drop the port anchor and ordered additional steering commands. So the question is, was this the problem? Did throwing the anchor really then maybe steer the vessel in the direction of the pillar because it hit it like so straightforward. It was not sliding past it and hit it. It really was a frontal collision. So once the ship maybe was moving forward, maybe they should have just let it slide and maybe it would have passed that pillar. So the question is, by doing a lot of action, did that make it worse? I, I'm assuming that the investigations will reveal that, but let's listen what happened then. So at 1.27.25, the pilot issued a radio call over the VHF radio reporting that the Dali had lost all power and was approaching the bridge. Around this time, the MDTA data shows the following also occurred. Their duty officer radioed two of their units that were already on scene due to construction on the bridge, one on each side of the bridge, and ordered them to close traffic on the bridge. So all lanes were then shut down by MDTA, so Maryland Traffic Assistance. So 
thankfully, thankfully that has happened. Imagine there would have been so many cars on the bridge and they would have all fallen into the cold waters. So by the way, guys, I want to say something because it always, it happens a lot. Inform yourself what to do in the case that you fall into the water with your car. So a lot of people panic and you know, if you're in the water and your car is not fully underwater, the, the moment you hit the water, open your windows, open your doors. But if, if that's not possible anymore, and I know that's the scary part, the experts are saying you have to wait until the car is fully covered with water, until you're able to open a window or a door again. Door is probably hard, but window and then get out. But it needs to be filled with water fully inside and outside and then you have a chance that's because of the pressures the varying pressures but you know i'm not an expert on this i'll just give you the advice look that up it's always good to know oh you don't have to fall in, into a big river like this or an ocean it can be a ditch that's enough right guys so but let's let's hear what happened then at 1.29, the ship's speed over ground was recorded at just under 8 miles per hour. From this moment on, approximately at 1.29.33, the VDR audio recorded sounds consistent with the collision of the bridge. Additionally, around this time, the MDTA dash cameras show the bridge lights extinguishing. At 1.29.39, the pilot reported the bridge down over the VFH radio to the Coast Guard. So yeah, it looks like they knew they had problems and they could give a short warning, but it seems it was enough to not let any traffic on the bridge again, but it wasn't enough time to pull the workers off the bridge, unfortunately. So since there have been other investigations uh, of bridge strikes or bridge collapses, they're pretty accurate probably with their estimate of 12 to 24 months. And wow, they're saying that this investigation will be a massive undertaking because there are many different components to the investigation. Uh, the NTSB says that they have an amazing team of individuals who are focused on very specific areas of expertise. And that's why they're saying that they have no doubt that they'll be able to pull this together in hopefully 12 to 24 months. So hopefully it could even last longer. So what's the hazardous material in these containers? So there, there's a senior hazmat investigator from the National Transportation Safety Board, and uh, he was looking at the cargo and the cargo manifest today, and he has identified 56 containers of hazardous material. And uh, it seems that 764 tons of hazardous materials, mostly corrosives, flammables and some other has hazardous materials like class 9 hazardous materials which would include lithium ion batteries have been found on the vessel and the problem is some of these containers seem to have been breached at least that's what they're saying because that's what they saw on the waterway so it seems we're dealing with another problem here. So what the officials say is the most likely reason for the crash is that before the vessel crashed, that cargo ship appeared to have an engine problem. The black smoke that was coming from the funnel and the flashing of the ship's deck lights did suggest a problem with the engine. There's other people that are saying this was a cyber attack and that this will lead to World War III and stuff like this. But I don't. I think nobody knows nothing at the moment. I think, uh, you know, it's way too early to say this 
or that. Um, and regarding World War III, I mean, aren't we already in it? If we look what's going on in the world, I'm not so sure. One thing that needs to be noted, that Dali already did have electrical problems just a few days before the vessel left the dock and uh, was causing that tragic bridge collapse. And you know, that vessel is known for having accidents, it seems. In 2016, the vessel had an accident leaving the port of Antwerpen in Belgium. There, it did struck a loading pier that was made of stone, causing damage to the vessel's stern. So was it the same captain at that time? But you know, it doesn't really matter because right now the vessel was had two pilots on board who whose sole purpose was to steer the vessel safely out of the narrow waters. So a lot needs to be investigated and I'm sure a lot more details will come out over time. And for sure, guys, I will keep you updated about this. So guys, that was my update about the collapse bridge in Maryland and Baltimore. I want to give you a regular update about that incident because I think this is a, a, a bad, bad catastrophe. And uh, yeah, we want to see how much more unfolds with this incident. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're bored in the meantime, check out my playlist about the Titan submersible accident. There's lots of videos with new stuff that came out. And check out my playlist about the volcanic eruption that's still threatening the town of Grindavik in Iceland. And there's so much more. Boeing. Boeing is really weird right now. Check out my videos about that. I don't want to say too much. And uh, I'll see you very soon, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And have a coffee on me. Bye-bye.